Hey everyone, this is Level Up Seesaw Activities, and hey, I'm really excited that you're here. I'm Angela from Seesaw, and I want to introduce Chris, our presenter today. Chris Shiner is a technology integrationist who works primarily with pre-K through fifth grade teachers in the Prior Lake School District. Well, Prior Lake, Minnesota, so he's really close by to me, actually. Um, he is also a former kindergarten teacher, and I am so excited that Chris is here because if you are on Twitter or in our Facebook groups, um, I think maybe even on Instagram, Chris is constantly sharing his amazing activity ideas and lots of amazing templates that he has built. So we are thrilled to have him here today showing some of his, I mean, mind-blowing really is what I'm going to say. Um, ways that he's using and creating with Seesaw Activities um, and supporting so many students and teachers. So Chris, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me and I'm really excited to be here too. Um, if you guys don't really know a lot about kind of how this is going, there is that quick bit.ly link that's on here. Uh, that'll take you to all of the activities that I've ever put into Seesaw, which is like 300 something at this point. Um, a little bit more about me is even though I'm a tech integrationist, we really focus a lot on instructional coaching. So a lot of the activities that I, I build are super purposeful to go straight into the classroom and really just enhance learning for all kids. So um, I really encourage you guys to check out some of our activities and, and see what's out there because some of them are pretty awesome and we'll get to show you some of those today. Uh, today we're going to actually go through three different styles. Um, we're going to see how to use them. I'm going to walk you through how to make them. And then at the very end, we'll actually answer questions. And one big thing I want you guys to kind of take away and one challenge, I guess, for you uh, is to just kind of listen and learn all of the process that's going on and see if you can take one or two things away that you can put into an activity of your own. So I'm going to give you all the templates, but there could be something that you could add as a different layer to a different activity or something that you wanted to just grab and quickly put into something else. So that's kind of my extra little challenge that I actually uh, didn't write in here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started right away with Puppet Pals. Uh, Puppet Pals is one of my favorite activities that's ever been built. If you have played the actual app Puppet Pals, it's really similar to that. So it's like a partner video game. Uh, it gives the students a ton of freedom to do what they need to do and it caters to really any content. Uh, the example I'm gonna show you today is actually about the American Revolution. So that's a big unit that our fourth graders are studying right now, and I'm gonna show you actually how that's gonna look. Uh, what I'm gonna do right now is switch over to my iPad. There we go, look at that, it worked. And open up Seesaw, okay? This little floating thing, uh, this is my finger, so everybody kind of knows. You can see where I'm clicking. Uh, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. What I'm going to do is go up to the big green plus and click on create or share activity. Because we're actually going to like start from square one and build this activity from nothing. I'm going to go over here to create a new activity. And let's title this American, whoa. American Revolution Puppet Pals, okay? Uh, I'm gonna skip directions today just for the sake of saving a little bit of time. I'm gonna go down here to add a template, and what I have in my camera roll is I have an actual picture of like the, the signing of the, the declaration or something like that. It's something similar to that, but it's just something that has to deal with the American Revolution. I'm gonna click on check to actually add this in. And before I click check again, I'm gonna put some layers on. So I want my students to have like these little emoji people that they can manipulate and talk with. So what I'm gonna do is go down to label and put in our two different emoji people. So the first one is gonna be a British person. <laughs> I'm gonna to choose to do it kind of like this today. Um, there really isn't a great like person or emoji that distinguishes between different countries, which is awesome, but uh, it also makes this one just a little bit challenging. I'm gonna click on style and get rid of the background. There it is, okay? So I have one person, oops, sorry. I have one person finished. My British man is all done. I'm gonna add in one more person, and this will be like an American judge, let's say, okay? All right, awesome. 
I'm going to hit check just to kind of show you what the students would actually get. They get a template that looks well, just like this. I mean, there's two different people. And what they're going to do is actually two students will come up and they can both manipulate this at the same time. So they'd say something like, uh, we are the 13 colonies and we want our freedom. And this British man would say, you can't. We have to be ruled by you know King George III or whatever. Um, they would just hit record, make that a whole fun video, turn it in when they're all finished up. So you as a parent and as a teacher are going to get this awesome student-owned uh, explanation of their actual work. Hit check. Okay. So that's really it for Puppet Pals. I mean, we're just going to fly through all of these that's in here. Um, the coolest thing about this one, like I told you, is uh, the student ownership that's in this. It's really a fun one for kids of all ages and it can be catered to any content. Our second one is actually the fact find. Uh, and this one really has to deal with like nonfiction text. Like let's give our kiddos something that is gonna allow them to explore facts in a little bit different way. So what we're gonna start with is a fun little engaging template, which for today is gonna be this awesome, cute little raccoon. Um, and what we're gonna do is put some like hide some facts inside of it. So. I'm going to switch back all the way into Seesaw here. And we're starting in the main screen. Because again, I want to show you from start to finish how this actually works. Go up to the big green plus, create or share activity. OK, and we're going to start a new one. Start from scratch here. This one will be called Fact Find Raccoon. Awesome, there it is. I might type a few directions in here just for this example. Click on add, whoopsies, add, okay, to click on label. You'll see why in just a second. Three, click on, oops, move, sorry, move the uh, spotlight to find the max. Move this one. All right. I know that's supposed to say spotlight. So we're just going to move on because I want to show you guys what it looks like. Okay. Add a template from our camera roll because, again, I already saved this. And here it is. Here's our cute, totally adorable little raccoon that we're going to add in. And here we're just going to hit check. Um, one thing that's important with this template is this little spotlight section here. Um, what this does is it creates a spot for us to actually put this little magnifying glass. And you'll see why and how in just a second here. So I'm going to go down to the label and actually put all of the layers onto this. What I always, always, always start with, anytime I'm making one of these like hidden texts or mystery activities or anything like that, is to put the spotlight in first. What I like to do is do five spaces, one, two, three, four, five, and a period. Okay. Once I'm finished with that, I'm going to click on Style, Custom, and bump the size up to like 55, let's say. Make the text white. Keep the background, uh, but then add in a border. Whoops, add in a border and make that white as well. So everything kind of matches. It looks really nice. Let's make the width like four and round the corners. Okay, so here we go. There is our spotlight. Look at that. That looks pretty sweet. Okay. I might add or make it just a tiny bit bigger. There. That looks even better. Okay. So here's our spotlight. The reason why you want to put that on very first is because that's going to be the thing that's like closest to the background. So it's going to really like actually float behind all of the hidden words that we have. So next thing I'm going to do is start to add in some of those hidden words. Uh, let's start with a fact like raccoons are nocturnal okay <clears throat> with these words i'm going to click style go back to custom and actually get rid of the background i want to get rid of the background get rid of the border and shrink this like as tiny and as hidden and as i can let's see if we can hide it over here okay once i have kind of the spot i want it to land i'm going to use the color board on the right to like make it disappear. Let's see if I can get a close color. Oh, right there. Look at that. Oh, 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 it's gone. Okay. 
it's you can still see it a little bit, but it's really close. I'm going to add in one more fact. Uh, they have bandit, or bandit what? Bandit mask maybe. They have a bandit mask. That's kind of cool. Okay, and let's actually put that like right on the mask itself. Go down to black. That's gone. Okay. Uh, they have a ring tail. Fun little fact there. Let's put that over here. Hide that close to his fur. Somewhere in here. Fun. Look at that. Okay. I'm not going to do any more facts. You can put in as many facts as you really want. Um, a sweet spot for me is to find like five different facts or so. That's just kind of uh, helps the students to have a number that helps them to know how many that they can actually get to. So students will get a template that looks like this. There's nothing selected. It's hard to see these texts. They're kind of hidden, but they can use this magnifier to find what they want. So they're going to grab the magnifier and start to float around. Let's see if we can find one. Oh, look at that. You see how that kind of pops out like that? Super fun, super awesome. We found a bandit mask. Keep going. Raccoons are nocturnal. Awesome. In the last one, they have a ring tail or ringed tail, whatever you want to say. So super, super fun. I love to finish an activity like this with students recording and reading like the five facts that they found or whatever it is. So it's manageable for kids. It's fun for kids. Uh, and they end up getting something out of it before they're all finished up. So that's it for fact find. We went super quick through that one too. The last one and one of my absolute most favorite is actually uh, one that we have a ton of templates for. It's the mystery board game. So the mystery activities all relate to having that little uh, the magnifying glass, the spotlight, whatever you want to call it, it relates to having that and hiding uh, different pieces that are in it. So this is actually a game board that deals with dice and some of those hidden elements too. Uh, what I'm going to show you is how to take an existing board game, an existing template or activity that's out there for Seesaw, and uh, put it into your class by changing some things and catering it to your classroom. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to swipe back to my iPad starting from square one here. I'm going to click on the plus, browse activity library. And straight from the Seesaw library, I'm going to click and type in mystery board game. OK. And I'm actually going to, well, you see it. It's right there. That's the one I want to use. Awesome. I was going to change my grade level, but I don't have to. So we've tried to put these in every single grade. So anybody can go and grab these as you go. Um, this is actually a really, really good example because this one is built for addition. What I'm going to do is actually change it to be like upper elementary vocabulary. Um, you'll see as we go through this, you can change these templates to really be anything to match your content. Actually, just the other day, um, we went into a fifth grade classroom, and what I did is I changed all of those things that were hidden in there to be like long division problems. So one of the problems was like, I don't know, 512 divided by 16 or something, a super, super hard problem. So the students had to move to it and actually compute something like that before they were able to, to get to that place. But uh, I'm getting off track here. I'm going to show you actually how to do this now. So I have my mystery board game. I'm going to go down to the three dots. And I'm going to edit this activity. It forces me to copy and edit simply because this is one that uh, was in the Seesaw library. It might not be owned by me. Even if it is, I still have to copy and edit it. Okay. Everything comes with directions, title, all the awesome stuff that we really want. Uh, what I am going to do is change the directions because this is not a, well, actually it is. Just kidding. I thought it said addition in here. Uh, we're going to go and actually change the template since all of this looks good. I thought the word addition was hidden, but it's not. Click on student template. And everything is kind of already built in here. And it's not easy to see, actually, because that's kind of the goal is we got everything hidden. So I'm going to go to this first one, double click with our label. And right now it says three plus four. It's super kind of hard and faded to see, but we're going to change this 
again, to be upper elementary vocabulary. So I'm going to write in the word like frigid. Whoops. G-I-D. There we go. Frigid. Shrink it just a tiny little bit so it fits in there. Awesome. The next word, we'll double tap. It's already here. We're going to change it. To, uh, let's change it to be like retain. Okay. We're doing some MCA practice uh, right now in some classrooms, and this would be a phenomenal way to get our kids engaged. Oops, sorry. In a little bit different way. Shrink. Come on. There we go. Shrink. Okay. Next word. Uh, let's do add end. Shrink it down. Okay, last word here. I don't know. Avalanche. It's probably spelled that one wrong. Awesome. Okay, shrink and put it in there. Awesome. So I just changed four quick words. You can go through and change the whole thing. Like I said, all of these are already done. So there's a label that's color matched all the way around the entire board. So you have a lot of different opportunities for your students to land on something and showcase what they know. Um, I just changed four for example's sake. What the students would do now is, again, they're going to get a template like this. There's nothing that's indicating what they have to do, but they can see that there's it's a two-player game. There's two different colors. There's the red player. There's the blue player. What they're going to do is roll a dice, and let's say I get a one. I'm going to land on this and actually tell you what the definition of the word frigid is. Okay? If I tell my partner right and it's the exact answer, awesome. I get to stay here. And now it's my partner's turn, okay? Let's say it's the other person's turn. It's Johnny's turn. He rolls a four. One, two, three, four. They get the word avalanche. If I tell you what it is, I get to stay. If not, I have to move on back. Um, and that's just kind of how the game is played, I guess. So uh, that's, that's really how this game kind of works as far as the dynamics of it all. There's a lot of different templates that are here. I'm just going to go back and quickly source through it just to show you. Um, this is a really colorful rainbow version, but there are just some plain, plain white ones too. If you wanted to really easily color match things, mystery board, whoops, game, whoops, you got to hit search there. Okay, and let's change it to be all grade levels. So you can kind of see some of these that are here. We have a little bit different style right there. Um, we have the same one here, but for kindergarten sight words, which is the best. Two-digit edition, all these things are all in here. And again, you can get to all of our templates and all the things that I put up on Seesaw through that quick bit.ly that um, we're going to flash back on before we're finished. Okay? So that's kind of all I had for you guys. I know I flew super, super fast, and we still have a little bit of time just for questions, but I wanted to make sure that you guys saw everything from like the thousand foot view, and then we can dive into some questions as we keep on going here. So does anybody have anything? Love it, Chris. Okay, I know. Everybody's mind is blown. I, I knew that would happen. So Chris, can you go into your Seesaw class for a moment, and can you actually yeah. show... Um, can you show a student response using a sample student so they see sure. basically the, the student, what they're actually, I mean, you kind of demoed it, but just so they can yeah, see absolutely. the flow. So they're, they're going to tap the ad, the green ad button on the activity. Sorry, I'm flying too fast. That you yep. Yeah, no. Look up here and add it to a yeah, class. Yeah, so start with that one. Yep. Yeah. Yep, choose your class. Perfect. And so now we shared it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we can, if, you, if you're not yet aware of this, in as a teacher, you, you can actually model activities for your students too and even play around as a sample student. So when Chris goes ahead on that American Revolution Puppet Pals, he can tap that green add button on the activity. And once he does that, he will he can choose to be the sample student to demonstrate and model what it would look like as a real student to respond to this activity. So again, if you're not aware yet, when you're doing activities, students at any point can go on the top and, and view the instructions again. But the big key here is whenever you have added labels or things on top of images like Chris has here in the template, the first thing that students have to do is they have to tap that T. So when they have tap that T, that gives them access access to move and manipulate those labels those are your movable objects so can you show us that Chris perfect yep Hello. so then someone had asked earlier how are both students working on this they're sharing a device so
So they are, you know, we have student A that's maybe, you know, the United States and we have student B that, you know, is playing the other character. So that is how they're collaborating together together um, and using those, you know, critical thinking skills as well. Um, that was awesome. So thanks for sharing that, Chris. And I think if you are using Chris's templates that he has already created, he's done a ton of the work for you in the sense that he's created the little spotlights or the magnifier glasses, uh, magnifying glasses that will see and uncover some of those other aspects in the activity as well. So you don't have to start from scratch, even though now you know and have the skills to do that. So that's phenomenal. Thanks for showing that, Chris. I'm going to jump into some questions that are coming. Yep. Um, oh, can you show the pointer? Like if people are recording, this is something that's available on if you're using iPad specifically. So once once students hit the record button, um, in this scenario right here, there's actually an arrow that shows up that they could use and point on the screen as well um, if that is something that they want to do. But it only shows up after you hit record. So now you see the little arrow pointer down there. Yeah. Uh, that is not that is on iPads only at this point. Okay, so um, Christy is wondering. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to share one last thing is um, I've gotten this before where like when teachers are using this, they're like, ew, that ugly box is showing up. But <laughs> yeah. uh, even though you're recording it and doing this, when I hit check, that box like disappears for students. Yeah. So even though yeah. you see that now for kids, um, it goes away when you actually process all of this stuff and it goes on through. So it makes a really nice, clean video. Wow. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, Christy is asking, she's used your uh, magnifying glass activities, and she's saying, my students were able to move the hidden words with a label tool. How do you avoid this problem? That and is a good that, Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. What would you say, Chris? Yeah, I'm going to go and show you actually what I would do. Sorry, this is uploading here. Um, what I When I go into a classroom and I model that for teachers and for students, I actually teach the kids to put the magnifying glass or the spotlight back in the spot because um, kind of like how you saw is that's the last layer. So if you leave it behind a word and try to move it again, you're going to move the word instead of the spotlight. So you actually have to kind of teach kids to like float behind the word and figure out what it is or the fact and then put it back um, up in that top right spot. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, Wendy is wondering, Chris, she must have seen some of your other templates that you have uh, mm -hmm. regarding calendar math. So mm -hmm. she's wondering, how do you do put base ten blocks and coins on a template for students to manipulate? So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start answering this question maybe while you kind of dig into your what you've already got in the activity library showing this. Um, so Chris has a great trick for building base 10 blocks. Again, he's really just using labels. So at this point, that's the only way you can create movable objects in Seesaw is by using the label feature. Uh, and then coins, I'll be interested to see how you tackle that one, Chris. Yeah, that's an interesting one. <laughs> um, so I just went to a blank <laughs> template, um, kind of like you can do with anything. You can add layers to any template. So I'm showing you this on a blank template, but keep that in mind that if, even if you had like a, a quick number sense one or those calendar math templates, you can still put these layers on it. So uh, with the emojis, what I'm going to do is click label, click the emoji keyboard, and I'm gonna go to the spot so you guys can all see. I'm gonna scroll, scroll way over here until I get to this section right here. And uh, believe it or not, these two, the white and the black one, are probably like the perfect base 10 blocks that you can build. So I'm gonna build a 10 stick first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And uh, once I have this, I can turn it and I can put it over here. Sweet, there's one 10 stick. Let's build another one. Label, emoji keyboard, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Build another one. And here's kind of where the magic happens. You can actually take these and layer them on top of each other so that kids have like this, this infinite cloner like you have in a smart notebook sometimes. You can put up to 50 different labels on one template. So you can really give your kids all the tools that they need to make the numbers that they want regardless of their age or wherever they are. So let's say we wanted them to write the number, uh, let's say 13, because I only have 13 up here. Okay, they just go 10, 11, 12, 
13. Simple, straightforward. Coins is another conversation, and it's one that uh, we've been trying to, you know, troubleshoot through, and it's one that a lot of teachers ask for. So what I choose to do is actually put the number uh, straight in here just with a label, and then I change the formatting to try and make it look as much like a coin as I can. So I'm going to click Style, go to Custom, and I'm going to bump the size up just a little bit, maybe to like 60, and then add in a like silver gray background Let's see if i can get that kind of tricky to hit on this one okay oh that's green kind of like that and then the border is actually where you're going to get the coin type of a look so we'll make the width a little bit bigger we'll change the rounded corners and uh we'll just leave that as black okay so then whoops so then I'll take these edges and just pull it out a little bit so I get kind of a rounded coin like that. Um, and that's kind of how I like to make coins. That's that's probably the best way that's out here. You can do this exact same thing, but put like a letter in there. Sorry, I'm jumping around. If I wanted to press like N for nickel or uh, do Q for quarter or whatever. So you can do those too. Um, and just like the base 10 blocks, you can layer these for kids so they can grab them. They can do what they need to with them. Um, and once you have that stack, it's all here for all the kids. So that's that's kind of my quick little how make coins in base 10 blocks. Boom. We can't stop them. I love it. I love it. Um, OK, other questions, other questions coming in. Chris, Chris can go on. We could probably be here for another 90 minutes sharing all sorts of cool tips. So we'll see how many we get through here um okay more questions coming in oh christy's wondering is it possible to lock in place option so she's giving me some feature requests thank you christy we do definitely have that noted we love to listen to our teachers um just a couple things to note so chris is de demoing a lot on an ipad here just because of ease of what he was creating however this works on all devices so if your kids are rocking chromebooks in the class Phenomenal. This, these activities are going to work great on a Chromebook. If they're using Android devices, um, you're going to be totally fine. So don't think just because he's demonstrating right now on an iPad that it's only going to be um, for iPads because definitely you can use this on Chromebooks, laptops, all of that. And I think the other thing I'd like to show, Chris, is maybe if you want to go back to browse the activity library and find one of your activities. Okay. When you click on, if you're in the activity library and you actually find an activity that you really like, you know, an author that you really like, you can actually click on their name and it's going to take you to their entire collection of activities that they have submitted to CESA. So right there, um, Chris is hovering over his math slide array. So he clicks on that activity. Um, and then opens up, it will actually go to his entire profile, which is what we have um, in that shortcut bit.ly that we shared earlier. So as you can see, Chris has 323 activities waiting for you right here. So you don't have to do a lot of the groundwork that he has already done to kind of create some of these templates. And I, boy, I have to tell you, every, you know, every week Chris comes up with something knew that he's figured out to do with activities. So definitely um, stay tuned and make sure you, you keep checking on his profile here because he's got all sorts of things. And I think I think that, the, that I really appreciate about uh, Chris and the content that he is sharing, number one, is he's sharing it with so many teachers and really giving you the ability to modify and make these work for your classroom. I also like the fact that a lot of this is collaborative, you know, so he, you're, they're working with a partner, they're, you know, rolling dice, they're building something, and then they're using this activity to kind of record and reflect as well. So I think that is just amazing. And I know we are at time right now, but I want to make sure all the questions get answered, but I also want to respect your time. So if you have, if your mind has already been blown and you are ready to exit, we truly appreciate you coming and we hope that you'll come back for more webinars and you know how to reach Chris just here uh, via even within Seesaw, you're going to get lots of his activities ready to use. So we're